Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to Power Supply Hell. This is an Amiga 4000 power supply from my re-board that I made from the Black Beast's parts to make a new one. She's dead to the world. I thought I'll get lucky and it'll be the stupid fuse. 250 volt, 4 or 5 amper. A little continuity check and she's good. What's going on with the oscilloscope? Self-calibration. This is the one from Mr. Jim. 4 channel, 100 megahertz. The goal with this AT power supply, which was originally purchased for my 4000 tower, was the Amiga 4000 doesn't require a tick signal. Something that the ATX doesn't give. You get a 3.3 volt, plus 12, minus 12, and plus 5. You don't get a minus 5. AT, on the other hand, plus 5, minus 5, plus 12, minus, five, uh, minus 12. And all you got to do is take basically one of these connectors off and you can solder in your 4000 connector. Leave a P9 so you can hook up a mediator if you do in the future or something like that. And it also has enough bergs and a floppy to get you at least started. You can couple or adapt if you need to. The benefit of an AT power supply, yes it's got a switch and all that magic, but it has two screws and the nipple that fits in the original case. This may look thin, you're like, oh my god, it's never going to fit. Well, I don't know. Well, I'll stick it on the side. I don't care. Um, my idea was, I found this Silverstone Designing Inspiration TX 300 watt TFX power supply at the old Micro Center today. I went down there for print filament, saw this, and said, oh, maybe that'll work for a 3000. Now I have had some boards from Mr. Simon on the way for a long time for the tick boards and some other things. But this is really skinny. What do we get? We get plus 3.3, plus 5, plus 12, negative 12, negative 5, but a plus 5 USB 10 watt 2 amp. Yeah, but I'm going to save this for another 3000 job and convert it proper. So all I'm going to do is stick it in the bird hole here. Center is ground, yellow is 12 volts, so that's 11.9, that's eh, that's close enough. 5 volt rail in the red, 522. Now this is not under load at all. Negative 12 is negative 11.8, so that's kind of weak sauce too. So what we're going to do before I go dissecting this is first turn it off. We're going to take this apart and we're going to see what's inside. 4000's power supply. I am not a power supply person, but one of these thingies in here is tan as a Latin lover on the beach in the summertime. And right around that MOSFET thing, you can see it's burnt slap up. Um, yeah, and the little resistor next to it. Now, is that just some discoloration from soldering? Because it's also on the other one. Did we lose both of them? There's one here and one here on the main and this one also. It's possible that we lost them. I'll have to take those boards out and see. They're right near the transformer and they generate a lot of heat. There's a big coil on the other side, so anything is possible. Probably 22s or something like that. Anyway, I don't have those, so I'm gonna first open this up and bore you with more power stuff. So disconnect it, turn it on, disconnect it, just to kick in those drain plugs there. This board, minus the fan, is actually substantially smaller than this board. Apparently my carpet is dirty again and Mona is vacuuming. You can see that this board will fit. Disregard the fan and disregard where the plug is. So that's a start. Now first off, I gotta say, if you're dealing with electricity and you're real dumb, just have someone else do it, okay? You can't fix stupid. Usually, there is a potentiometer you can turn to increase or decrease or dial in the voltage as you see fit. That's an ATX power supply. This is an AT power supply where it's just like no F's given and that's all you get. Fan in the back this way. Fan was over here blowing this way. So these are a little bit different, okay? But I figured good enough. So there's one of your potentiometer adjustments for one of the voltages. The secondary one is usually on this card. What I need to do here is desolder this mess of wires. 
this mess of mess in this corner here to free up all of the blues, which are the fives, and all this stuff, which becomes an Amiga. I am not going to attempt at all to cut these or suck them out with a solder sucker. We're just going to heat up the soldering iron and remove them. It's next day because I'm lazy and I have a lot of crap to do. So I got out my drill with a drill bit. I don't know what size this is, but that's the size I'm using. I need to expand these holes. They're nothing major, so I'm just going to go in, drill them out. There you go. See, just a little bit larger. The idea is. One of these big plugs now can fit in here, snugly, and I can solder it in. Well, I'm halfway there, but you know the drill. Tonight's, whoa, tonight's interrupter is Mr. Kevin, who needs me to come to South Carolina to flash the Pi Storm core and fix his 1084S. We'll see, buddy. We'll work for food. Okay. So, before this thing went off like crazy, I got the 12 volts in. I got the negative 12, the negative 5, um, two 5s, and the fan's still there. So, I got these grounds I got to do. I want six of them. And then I got the, uh, the brown, wherever it is, up here, uh, power on whatever the hell it's called, power on wire. The grounds are in, final wire is the brown, which is basically programmed. The original Commodore connectors, same colors, same everything. I can slide this tube back down. I'm gonna double check my solder joints because, double check them. And then I'm gonna clip her legs for the big guys here. Okay, that's an AT power supply converted to an Amiga 4000 power supply because it doesn't have a tick. Now, could I fire this up right here and test it? I sure could, but I'm not grounded to the case. So now we got to fish this puppy back inside. That's the fun part. The switch will mount to the switch location up here in the corner. So my first task is to ground this and get these power mofos in. This is a little short for me, this lead wire. The original wire, I don't know where I put it. I threw it on the floor. I could use these. I mean, it's just the yellow and black on pegs here. I could use them, but this EMI filter plug is a little bit too long. And these now have it internally. And now a single ground, not a triple ground, which is bonded here. We'll still stick all the bolts on. So that's the top plug. Here's the pass-through plug. I don't ever really use these things. You want to go for it? It's grounded enough. You know. All right, let's plug this into the top. Flip your finger and put it right across the 120. This is powered by the mains here. First, I'm going to hook up my voltage meter, put it on 20. The fan will probably scare me. It's blowing that way, so it'll suck to the table. We're going to go in with a Berg, which is that and that. This should be 12 volt on the gauge. Turn this on, but on the switch. 11.89 fans blowing powers off so hopefully my perfect turn this off turn this back on to drain any current out let that drain 0, 0.0 good capacitors are still full so be careful when you lick them uh, test the 5 volt rail 
Oops. 522, a little high, but remember under load it will come down. Negative 12 is going to be on the tip here, so we're going to go on the Amiga connector itself. We know blues are grounds. Negative 5, perfect. This is all tangled up. 12, there's 11, 9, negative 12, negative 11, 18, and PC sense, 5 volt, 5.18. There we go. Got a working 4,000 power supply. Cool beans. I'll leave that on the drain for a little while before I go mounting it in the case. Now you can drain a capacitor by crossing the streams. Don't cross the streams. Why? I'm going to let this drain fire down a wobble popper 3 and we'll put the power supply back in hopefully if we shock ourselves we won't care. She's tight and uh, yeah it's it's very 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 close to the point where I got a wedge and get this thing slid over and under the fan as best I can to get the screw in to get this lid closed up. It's hitting this cap, which is just great. So I, if I slide it this way and get it down, whoop, this, well it was fitting a second ago, yeah. Oh my god. Yep. A lot of fun here. That is cr Mr. Michael in Canada. Mr. Kevin. Mr. Jack. Mr. Tom. Mr. Keith. Mr. Remy. Mr. Jim. Mr. Brett. Mr. Matthew. John. Paul. Brett T. Mr. Andrew T. Doug. Keith. Randall. And Dave. All in one. This is a mess. Oh, and Jonathan just texted me. <laughs> so yeah, my phone just. This is not ideal. I don't know if this is the way to go because it doesn't screw in. I'm just trying to get it to fit, man. You're thinking, God, Chris, that is horrid, and it is. And there's cables and shit everywhere, and metal bits and pieces that I'm gonna tape all up. Even if I got a hot snot the entire bottom of the board. Just mounting it upside down. That's scary as hell. Oh crap, I forgot about the power, my power switch. We're not going to look at it. We're not putting the ring on yet. I'm just seeing if it closes and where my potential explosions will be. That way I can coat with rubber on the inside and foam and look, I don't care works. It's like a Craigslist rebuild. AT power supplies are hard to get small. There you go, it fits. Perfect. Look, can you tell it's got another AT power supply? Nope, it's a, it's a light on. So, I'm not turning it on like this. I have to put the grommet in and other things, but this might go. This has got to go in there. This big old click. If I can isolate this, it'll be fine. Cover all this up. She'll run upside down, but she'll run cool because the fan will blow right across the heatsink. I hope. Can it fit sideways? It could also fit sideways a little bit more safer. A lot safer. And it actually can... Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We'll just go like this. Wrap all this stuff around. Well, that kind of does it right there. Look at that. Wrapping the cord for the switch around the thing isolates it and you can put the lid on. And I could even tape the whole inside if I was scared, but then it'll turn into goo. And I don't want to do that. It is cold in this basement. My air conditioning is cranked. I don't know how much tape you need, but I know how much I'm going to use. This is for testing purposes only, okay? Because the tape can come undone. 
you can have issues. So I have that plexiglass. I have to measure and cut out a piece, but I'm too impatient and it's late at night and I want to just get this in the case to test it first to see if this way works. And then when it does, if it does, I will then cut the plexiglass out, screw it in. That way it's a lot cleaner because the heat will turn this into bubble gum eventually and you don't want that. There we go. In case it did touch. Oh man. The switch isn't switching. The spring. China. The spring. The cheap Chinese spring went inside the clip. Forky. Switch broke. Now it's gonna stay in. It's blowing. It's blowing inward instead of sucking out. So it's blowing. It's sucking in cool air and blowing it into the Amiga. I gotta flip my fan around. I have to mount the fan that way because this fan only has holes on the one side. It's 10:30 at night. Back. It's the next day and 3:47 p.m. and. Uh, I have to make this hole a little bigger, just a scooch. Well, I couldn't find the step drill and the size I need, but I did find the Porn Star Edition. Uh. So, I'm going to round this hole out just a little bit. That looks good. I've been looking for this bit too. You can tell she's only taking it about six, six rings max, so yeah. Step one is... Does it work? Does it work on the Amiga? I'm just going to plug it in. Let's see what happens. My phone's going off like mad. There's our power light, low, high. And okay, start 3.2, 47.111. Yes! Cool. Let me get a little marker and write plus on that. Alright, so we're going to load... Nine figures, NTSC mode, so we'll have a little ripple bar up here because I don't have WHD load actually installed. I just copied the executable to C to run stuff. If you do, you have a WHD load prefs where you can comment, uncomment the line that says PAL. It'll always run in PAL and you won't have that weird bar and you'll be in the appropriate speed. So, the power supply works. You saw the repin. I do need to get another, I do need, I do need to get another fan preferably a Noctua NF80. Flip it the correct way so she's blowing out, sucking across the proper way. Not that it does anything anyway. I could probably leave it like this and fine forever. But I want it to blow out the back and not into the case. So that's all I got for now. Thank you for coming along on this journey. If you're interested, AZ Power Supplies are dirt, slap, cheap on eBay. Better than spending 80, 90 dollars for an ATX and having all that extra crap you don't really need and you need a tick board. For certain Amigas like the two and three. You can run them in V-Sync, but why? I don't like NTSC 040 at all. So that is all I got for now. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. And I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.